Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. To get into the second segment of the show, back again with Kenneth, Kenneth and Emran here. Now focusing in on the quarterbacks a little bit. The last quarterback to get an extension this offseason was Jared Goff. He got a massive four-year, $212 million deal, $53 million per year, making him the second um, highest earning quarterback in the NFL. And now the main talk is really around four names. You know, Jordan Love, Tua Tungavailoa, Trevor Lawrence, and Dak Prescott. I think basically all of them have said that they would like to get a deal done before training camp, ideally for each of their situations. So now I'll bring the question to you guys. I'll start with Kenneth this time. Um, who do you think, just in your mind, has the best situation now to get paid earlier than the rest of these other three quarterbacks at the moment? I mean, I it seems like I, I feel like it's either going to be Trevor Lawrence or Jordan Love. I don't know, just the, just from what I've seen, what I've been reading a little bit, I, I think it's going to be one of those two. I, I think, I I mean, it's tough to say again because you're not close to the situation, but that's probably my guess. Um, I know, I mean, Jordan Love, like towards the end of last year, he was unbelievable, played really well, and you know he deserves another contract. Trevor Lawrence, there's some, you know, criticisms with him, especially with how last year ended for the Jaguars. I mean, I thought after they beat the Texans the second time in Houston, I thought the division was all locked up. I thought they were good to go and they were going to make the playoffs again. And that was not the case. They ended up finishing nine and eight and they missed the playoffs. They lose that game to the Titans. And that was a disappointing end to their season. I think part of that too was he got banged up. A lot. I mean, he had like he had concussions. He had, I think, a, a knee injury too. I mean, he had a, a lot of things going on, and I think that was part of it too, um, as to why the Jaguars finished the way they did. But I, I'm on the positive side with Trevor Lawrence. I think he also deserves a contract as well. Um, but that that would be my guess. I think it's going to be one of those two guys because I know we just talked about the Cowboys a little bit. I said I think Dak might be gone, um, and then when it comes to Tua. You know, I don't want to give Tua a new contract, but it, it seems like they are going to give him that contract. So, but I, that would be my guess. It's either going to be Trevor Lawrence or Jordan Love is going to be the next one to get paid. How about you, Emmer? Who do you think uh, out of Tua, Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, uh, Dak Prescott? Or actually, I'll switch the I'll switch the question a little bit, Emmer. In your opinion, who do you think deserves to be paid yeah. first out of the four that I just named? Well, I think out of all four quarterbacks, there's only one quarterback, in my opinion, that can confidently walk into the negotiation room. And I don't think there will be any hesitation from the from the front office, the opposing front office. And for me, that's Jordan Love. Based on the season he had last season, like whenever you're in your first year starting, you're looking for progression. And man, if you look at that first game compared to the last, the progression has been there. Each game, he steadily improved. And even earlier when he was struggling, he still had amazing second halves and brought his team. But I was very, very impressed with Jordan Love all season. What he did in the playoffs, that game, he gave me a heart attack against the Niners. Did fall a little bit at the end, but that, you expect that from a rookie. So for me, he definitely um, definitely is the one that has the biggest leg to stand on. You know, it was interesting your comments regarding not wanting to pay Tua, but still uh, t talking to Kenneth, but um, being okay with paying uh, Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence is a guy that's kind of been, especially um, before the end of this past season, his name has been carried about, uh, been carried by how good of a prospect he was coming in. I've never been a huge fan of him. I don't think he's a game changer at QB that you expect from a number one overall pick. I think there's been times that he hesitates in the pocket. There's been times that he just doesn't give you a feel of like, oh, this is the guy that's going to bring us back into the game. This, Yes, he did come with that comeback against, um, I, I forgot who it was. The Chargers. The Chargers yeah, with, with th that playoff game and went on that run to the divisional. But he never struck me as a guy that I had confidence in going into a game with. And I think Tua has had more, more consistency, in my opinion, despite, you know, sometimes him. I think Tua, you know, these past two years, he's been on long stretches of playing absolutely great football. And, but with Trevor Lawrence, I just don't see that sort of consistency, the way he folded at the end. And I personally, I think he's like a 14th, 15th quarterback in that caliber. And, you know, there's been a lot of people that it's before the end of the last season that have him like almost top five, top six. I think that's always that's been ridiculous. I think that has a lot to do with his name. And Dak Prescott, the writing is written on the wall. We just need to re read the room. 
And I, that's all I need to say regarding that. that yeah. Was going. And uh, you know what's funny about it? Um, you guys both made uh, good points there with Tua and uh, Jordan Love there as well. I mentioned this before on, I think, the show yesterday or two shows ago that it's interesting how people talk about both quarterbacks, um, Jordan Love, Tua, and even Trevor Lawrence a little bit here because Tua, you know, you mentioned the consistency and everything. This is the first real year that he has been healthy. So a part of me wants to think that, you know, he can't control the injuries, right? He can't control if he's healthy or injured the the entire year. But with Trevor, you know, he really hasn't been too injured until this last year, like you brought up, Kenneth. So, you know, how you, you know, gauge or determine how well he has been in most years when he has been healthy compared to Tua, where he's been pretty unlucky with his injuries, I think is pretty interesting to talk about. And also, just before I mention my next question, Tua and Jordan Love also, both coming off of their best years, Tua obviously being hurt before, and then Jordan Love not playing because you have Aaron Rodgers there. Again, it just strikes me a little bit weird how people talk about them, I think, in a different light, talking about Jordan Love a little bit higher than Tua. Um, uh, and I don't know why, just because they're both coming off of good years. You know, Tua's been hurt, but they're both coming off one good year this past year, and I just think people talk about Jordan Love a little bit higher than Tua um, for some reason that they may believe. But um, leading into my next question now with these guys and a lot of how you gauge these contract extensions, you know, depends on how much better you think these quarterbacks can get if you're going to pay them for the next four to five years. So I'll go back to Kenneth. Kenneth, who do you think out of these four, um, you know, has the greatest room to grow and get better and give their team the best shot of maybe making the playoffs more often, maybe winning a Super Bowl eventually? Who do you think is that guy uh, out of these four? I mean, when I look at the Dolphins, I, I mean, their skill position players are incredible with Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell and then the running backs as well, Raheem Mostert and A-Chan. Um, but for me, I feel like with Jordan Love and the Packers, he's going to grow with his receivers. They had the youngest receiving core in the league last year. And these guys, I mean, they're not all stars. I think the best receiver on the Packers is Christian Watson. Um, but he's dealt with injuries over the last couple of seasons. Um, but I do like Dontavian Wicks. I like Jaden Reed, Romeo Dobbs. I think all of them are going to grow and get even better. And that's something, and, I, and I've, I've touched upon it on my show too, just how last year they were kind of learning the offense and, you know, building rapports, you know, between Jordan Love and the receivers. Now it's just, okay, let's take that next step this year. And I feel like the Packers as a team, they are going to be one of the top teams in the NFC. I think they're going to push Detroit for that division. I think it, I think Detroit's going to win it, in my opinion, still. But I think you got to put the Packers in the conversation as one of the top teams in the NFC, regardless. Um, but with the Dolphins, yeah, I'm just – for me, I'm not really a Tua believer. I think he, he was solid last year. And, you know, I was happy that, you know, the previous season dealt with all the concussions. I was happy that that was put behind him and he had a healthy season. But if you look at the Dolphins' season – the only team that they beat with a winning record last year was the Cowboys. And the Cowboys could not beat a team with a winning record on the road. And that was a home game for the Dolphins. Uh, they struggled against the Chiefs twice. I mean, the playoff game, I mean, it was just tough circumstances, especially with the weather. But when they played against the Ravens, you know, the, the Ravens really, I mean, the Ravens destroyed them. The Bills beat them twice. You know, th th that's why, for me, I'm just not really a believer in Tua in the long term. And he's one of those guys where um, the guys around you are going to elevate him. And I feel like that's going to be an issue for the Dolphins if they want to go further, um, if they want to win a playoff game. Because I did a segment on that today, too. Um, you know, Mike McDaniel talking about ending the playoff drought. You know, they haven't won a playoff game in 24 years. They've made the playoffs the last two years, give them credit there, but they haven't been able to win. So I think that's going to be an issue. Um but yeah, for me, I, I think Jordan Love and the Packers. I mean, I, I think Love's going to have another uh, solid season, and we'll see what the Packers can do. Right. Same question to you, Emin. Who do you think out of Jordan Love, Tua, Trevor, and Dak has the most room to grow to sort of validate any sort of contract extension, a lot of money that they'll most likely get in their next contract? You know, I think it's funny that um, this is a topic regarding mostly quarterbacks age 25 and younger, and we bring in Dak too. I think this is a kind of just an indictment on Dak. And I'm not, I'm not 
defending him or anything. I think he deserves to be in these conversations just based on, you know, some of the great regular seasons and some of the huge meltdowns whenever it matters the most that came from him. So I definitely, he's not the one, <laughs> he's not the one I would uh, think is on that sentence. He's, he shouldn't even really be in this conversation with being 30. We know what he is and we know what he isn't. And at the end of the day, he's a very, he's a decent quarterback that can't get you over the line. That will never be good enough to get you over the line, uh, especially on the ridiculous money that he gets paid. Now with um, Trevor Lawrence and Tua, I think they're in that similar boat. I think they're kind of like the peak that they could be is, you know, especially with Trevor Lawrence. I think Tua has a little bit of a next level of he could stay healthy and he could. Um, and I don't know what's the I don't know what's the most PG way to say this, but like, you know, get some grit. I, I really believe in Tua's accuracy. I think Tua is a very, very accurate quarterback. His arm strength and all that, he doesn't have the best arm, but I really believe in his accuracy and I believe in the tangibles with him. Now, Trevor Lawrence, I just, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. The, uh, you know, before the his career, he came out, like you said in this article, how football is, is just a hobby to him. And he kind of plays with that sort of persona. And I kind of can see that with the way he plays. I, I don't really believe in Trevor Lawrence in that manner. So, but obviously the clear one here is Jordan Love, just based on, I mean, that's the clear answer, just to make it short. The way he can throw on different platforms, he looks like Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he does. He really does. I mean, I mean, he sat behind him for a while. Yeah, so. He just sat behind him. Great arm. He, he just seems like a good leader. Leader. He seems like the tangibles is there. I like how he speaks in the post-game press conferences. He doesn't get too high. He doesn't get too low. And that's very good. That's a very good trade for a franchise quarterback and a young franchise quarterback. That's even better. Um, everything about him just screams, you know, potential superstar in the making. And it's a little disappointing because, you know, Green Bay, with these quarterbacks, you want to take advantage of them on a rookie deal. And, well, that rookie deal is wrapping up real soon. So, but it's the Green Bay way. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you guys. I think just based on the, uh, you know, the factors and everything and how really it was a little bit weird with Green Bay because they didn't pick up the fifth-year option for Jordan Love and instead they extended him um, for a cheaper deal. Obviously, it benefits them more than him, but... Um, I would probably agree with you guys. I think, oddly enough, D Dak is the quarterback that makes the most money out of all of them right now. He makes about $40 million, So talking about an extension, how long you want to make that and how much more you want to pay him um, is a little bit dicey there. But, uh, yeah, I would probably agree with you guys there. And I think just quickly before uh, Zoom kicks us all off here, um, just your final thoughts. Give me your guys' ranking. Um, on all these four quarterbacks, we'll start with you, Kenneth. Rank them one to four uh, for me here as we uh, we close out this segment. Man, really, really putting me on the spot here. Uh, so, I I'd probably put Jordan Love one. I'll give Dak respect. Put him at two. Trevor Lawrence three, two or four. When you say this, you say based on this is like this past season, like how like a power rankings of this four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a yeah one to four. Who would uh who would you have in that order? Jordan Love one. I'd go slightly, slightly Dak two, two or three, and yeah, I'd have Trevor Lawrence dead last. Not okay, I like it. I like All right, it. we'll see how we'll see how it goes uh, for the upcoming season. Tua versus Trevor Lawrence. Are we gonna get that game this season? I don't think so, but we'll just, I guess we'll compare the stats uh, okay. and where the teams are at by the end of the year. Okay. Yeah, it should be good. Same conference. The AFC's tight. The AFC's going to yeah, be very competitive. I mean, it's absolutely loaded. I mean, there's maybe like one or two teams where you just are like, yeah, they got no shot of making the playoffs. But like, I mean, it's a gauntlet of a conference. So, But yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Absolutely. And yeah, that'll, that'll wrap it up for this segment and that'll wrap it up for Kenneth and Emmerich on this uh show thank you guys for coming on i really appreciate you guys giving your thoughts on the show yeah it was yeah, a lot of fun manny thank you thank you for and uh on that note we will send it to a quick break and when we return i'll be back with you guys talking about some more rankings across the divisions in the nfc north focusing in on the running backs this time around so that and much more coming up after this break you're listening to the gsmc chip shot football podcast 